everybody. I'm Lala Cochran. I'm an actor here in Atlanta, and I have been for the last 30 years, most frequently at the Horizon Theater. But unfortunately, during this coronavirus, the theaters are dark, hopefully not for much longer. Um, but this has left me time to pursue some of the other things that give me life, and that would be cooking and gardening. So I'd like to share with you some of these things that have helped keep me safe and sane and sated during all this. And uh, so let's go in the kitchen and have some fun. I've just gotten back from the grocery. Gloves, mask, you're welcome. And I wanna show you what I've gotten and what I want to cook for you today. I'm gonna to teach you how to do chicken stock. It's a very basic, simple building block of your kitchen. I've got some chicken thighs, carrots, chives, dill, celery, and an onion. What in the hell is this doing in here? Somebody must have put this in my basket. Well, I'll just hide it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is make some chicken stock. It's a great building block to have. You can do so many different things with it. You make soup, you make sauces. Anyhow, there are all sorts of things. You can keep it in the fridge, you can freeze it. It's great. And one of the great things when you make your own stock at home is that you get schmaltz, which is chicken fat. And it is gold, it's liquid gold southern crude but so you, know, you don't want to cut away all this fat and the skin you want that's that's good keep it use it um the difference between stock and broth they're really used interchangeably i'm just cutting off some of this um skin and fat to get it in there and start rendering anyhow stock is a richer um version of broth. Um, a stock is made with aromatics, um, onion, carrot, celery. Um, it's also made with chicken that has bones in it. You could also use chicken backs that these I pulled out of the freezer um, so they look kind of janky but that's 79 cents a pound and there's still plenty of meat but there's a lot of bone um, a lot of collagen, and the collagen that you get from the bone and connective tissue is what gives you a richer st uh, stock. Um, see, it's already rendering some of that fat, and that's a good thing. So broth is just a little lighter. It's thinner. Um, you can still use it for all the, you know, soups, and um, but the if you make stock, like a bone broth, or bone stock, it's just gonna have um, a lot more richness, which in my book is a good book. Um, <laughs> it's almost time for a cocktail. Let's see what we've got. Oh, here's a nice bottle of Viognier. Nah, I think I'm gonna have some Boda Box. Boda, it's good for the environment, easy to recycle, it doesn't go bad, and it comes right out of the spigot. See? All right, so, yeah, there we are. Just a little bit in the jelly jar to start the cooking. Okay, so, um, there you go. Render, render, render. So now what I wanna do is cut this in half. Um, and then I'm gonna put this cut side down in here in some of that rendered fat. And I'll put this last one in. That's about two pounds of uh, thighs. And uh, we'll use probably half a lemon, I mean half of, a, of an onion um, to give it some good flavor, but we want this to get some good color on it before we add the water and the, and the other things. So let's just let this sit here for a minute. 
And when we come back, we'll see the beautiful color that it's got. And the color equals flavor. Okay, so we're back. Cheers. Cooking a la Lala. Mmm. Mm. Delicious. Both. Um, all right, so we've gotten some good color on here. Look at that. It's got some nice brown. This onion. Swine onion. There we go. See that nice color there? Color is flavor. All that beautiful golden. This one didn't get as much. Um, but, so now I'm going to throw in some bay leaves. That gives it some nice uh, herbaceous flavor. Uh, also, a bunch of uh, black peppercorns, 10, 20. Um, and if you have any sort of odd dried peppers around, um, these are called a long pepper. They kind of have a little bit of a cinnamon or cardamom. Um, I got them at some fancy pants gourmet store. Um, actually, I guess I should plug them. Savory Spice, they're online now. They used to be in the neighborhood. Um, but I like to put the, the dried spices in there to kind of toast them, and that releases some of their flavor. We'll give that a few minutes. And uh, we've got some celery. I'm just gonna cut those. Don't my nails look good? I gave myself a mani-pedi. <laughs> Gotta take care of yourself, ladies. Don't wanna go down the tubes. All right, this is a carrot meant for sharing. I'm not gonna use the whole thing. Um, but let's just, probably don't even need that much, but. All right, so we've thrown that in. Got some parsley that my neighbor brought over. Okay, so hear that sizzling away. Um, Okay, so the schmaltz that's so good to substitute for oil or butter. Um, this is the schmaltz, and I've worked my way down. It's kind of the bottom here. Um, I don't have that much left, so I'm glad we're making some more. Um, but warm this up in the microwave for 10 seconds, and it'll melt. And again, it is liquid gold. It's just got so much flavor. And I love butter. I love butter, but this is, I'm not going to say better, but it's better bit, better flavor than canola oil or vegetable oil. You just get so much more flavor. And I just keep it in a little covered thing in the fridge. And when I need a little um, schmaltz for whatever I'm doing, I just pull it out of there. So now we're going to add some Water, there's one quart, and here's another quart. Um, and the reason I'm doing this in a pressure cooker, it, it just does it really fast. Um, I love my pressure cooker. It's, this is not an Instapot brand. It's a Fagor, came out a little bit before the Instant Pots, but it does all the same things. It has a browning function which is how you get that great color and flavor. But you could also do it in um, something like this. This is a creuset cast enamel. Um, if you want to do it on the stove top, it'll take a lot longer um, and maybe a little more cleanup. But I love my pressure cooker. I highly recommend. That's another section of the story here. Um, all right, I'm going to put the lid on, and we're going to do this for about 20 minutes, and we'll be back. All right, so it's finished uh, pressure cooking. Uh, so come look in there. That is our chicken, our aromatics, um, our parsley, peppercorns, you can see. And you can see that beautiful layer of glistening gold on top there. That's our schmaltz. And I'm going to um, get a bowl and scoop out the chicken with this spider, which is a great tool to have. Um, ah! The cookies. I hid these cookies last night so I wouldn't eat them in bed. I went looking for them. 
We both find did. Them. We both went to look for them. And I had hidden them. It worked. I'm not going to hide them so well tonight. All right, so um, I'm going to let that cool off a little. Okay, so we're pulling this out. This is obviously too hot to handle. Like, you know who. <laughs> Here we are. This is hopefully cooled off enough to handle the chicken. One thing you can do if you really want to, you know, gild your lily um, is take, see how it just falls off the bone. It's just perfect. Oh, here comes Roscoe. Watch what he can do. Honey, let's do this. Roscoe, sit, lie down, stay. That's chicken. Stay. Good boy. Are you gonna drool? Good boy. See if we can get some drool going. Come on, baby. Come on. This is your moment. Release! Ah, what a dog. What a cat. <laughs> okay. So what you can do is take the, you know, the rest of the skin and bones and fat, whatever, has it maybe not rendered, put it back in here and let it go for another few minutes. But see, it just falls off the bone. And this just took 25 minutes. Um... Owie, 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 swine, swine, <laughs> chicken piece. Bone back in. Um, okay, so now here you've got this great, yeah, and the, look, you can see the lovely um, fatty sheen of, of the uh, chicken fat on there. I guess I'm kind of obsessed with it. Okay, so speaking of obsessed with, we started watching Ozark last night. I'm sure everybody out there in... Quarantine land has been watching shows and reading books and doing a stack of thousand piece uh, jigsaw puzzles uh, Watch Ozark. We've only seen season one episode one Alan Edwards Waffle Palace alumna alumni alumna oh. Eric Mendenhall Bethany Lind Mendenhall and There's tons of them. I just don't know who, who all they are yet because we're just in um, episode one, season one, but a lot of Atlanta actors are in that show. It was shot in and around Atlanta, so I highly recommend. It's going from clothes to pajamas, but these things take time. Things just don't happen overnight, people. You gotta work, you gotta have a costume change. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking this out of the, the pot and Doing this, straining it. And sometimes it moves a lot faster if you do something like this. It, it, it's, it faster can be disaster, and I'll show you why. You can put it back down there, thanks. Um, sometimes it just goes all over the place. Not yet. Oh, yep. Ow, it's hot! That's why it's good to have a pit bull dog because if it goes on the floor, mm -mm. your animal can lick up all the... All right, see all those bones, all that good stuff? Oh, there you go. This is the finished product. That's two quarts. And you want to let all that stuff soak through because there's still some vegetable stuff, flavors, and... Okay, so we're going to put this in the fridge. Or it actually might be chilly enough outside tonight that we can put it outside. It'll chill, and all the fat will be on top. You can get the fat off and put it in your little container, your little special pod. Okay, so this is the day after we made the stock. You need to chill it. And you see there's all of this delicious, don't throw it away, fat. Um, so I'm gonna come through here and skim it. I'd actually like for it to be a little bit harder. Um, and this was kind of a skinny chicken, so there's not as much 
Um, but you see I'm skimming, skimming. And I don't want to lose any of this stuff. Okay. So this is the, you know, this is one thing. This is the schmaltz. And this is what we're going to make our dumplings with, our matzo balls with. We'll make some gougere, which is a French pastry. We can substitute the uh, schmaltz for the butter that is used typically in that. Um, and it's also good to make sure there's still some here because if you use this for soup, you wanna have some of that richness in your soup. So I'll just cover this up and put it in the fridge. And next time I need a little bit of um, good fat, I'll just take a teaspoon or a tablespoon out and heat it up and go from there. I want to show you some things that you can do with this stock once it cools off. This is some rice left over from um, a carryout meal we got from one of our favorite restaurants on Buford Highway. Good luck, gourmet. Please go order food. Tell them Lala sent you. It's the best food. It's, it's wonderful. Um, but what you do with this, this is cooked rice. I'm just going to dump this in here move the puzzles I guess and um, so just that and actually that's way too much rice for this a half of this amount of rice when you add water or, or stock or broth to it will double triple in so in amount so or volume um, the other thing that we're gonna do and we'll do this um, is to make polenta, which is cornmeal. It's basically grits. This is Goya brand. This, I think, cost $1.29. This, I mean, these are options for when you're, you're counting your pennies, is to have great chicken stock that you can mix with other things to make a great meal. Dried beans, which are inexpensive and great and nutritious and shelf stable. Um, so what we, are, we will be doing this shortly is making some polenta with some stock. We had a little bit of milk left in the, in the bottle um, and some stock and topped it off with water. So we'll put this in here and heat it up. You can throw a piece of rosemary in there and it will flavor the um, liquid that you're cooking with. And this is about a cup of polenta it's just cornmeal, it's grits basically, Italian style. And um, you can do this with just water, you can do it with just stock or broth, um, but I like to do it with a little mix of all three and you just do this in slowly. And you stir, you stir, you stir, you stir. Show it some love. And you want to kind of pay attention to it. You can walk away for a few minutes. But again, this is an inexpensive and delicious. The only thing that is going to hit your pocketbook is the cheese that you're going to, you're going to want to put the cheese in. Some um, Parmesan, but you could use anything. You could use cheddar or Gruyere or Fontina, anything. Um, but you just stir it and it slowly thickens and thickens. And then here you'll see, this is that leftover rice. Um, I'm actually gonna take some of it out because this expands so much. It expands so much um, that we don't need this much. So let's, okay. And I'm just gonna put some chicken stock on it. And you can see this is the schmaltz floating on top. Um, I'm not going to scrape that off. You won't get fat. You won't get fat if you eat this or drink it. And when it's done, you just put some cilantro, some sliced onions, some sriracha. You can put some, you know, crumbled up chicken. Uh, you can put a, a little bit of ginger. And now let's give this a stir. And then this will heat up. And it's all clumpy at first. 
But you see, that is about, what, two cups, less than two cups of liquid. And it's all clumpy now, but you know, we'll come back and you can see what this turns into. Okay, cheers. Um, look here, how thick this polenta has gotten. It's beautiful. And when it gets about that thick, you just add some cheese. We grated some Parmesan cheese. I'm actually gonna put in a lot more than that, but I didn't want everybody to see what a glutton I was for Parmesan cheese. So stir that in, that'll melt, that'll melt, that'll melt. And then even though, you know, I love the schmaltz, we put in some butter, but you don't have to, if you don't do dairy, you don't need the cheese, you don't need the, the butter. You can just use herbs and um, you could use mushroom stock or something like this to um, season your polenta. But you see how nice and creamy it is? And that's just one cup of polenta. And that yields about, I don't know, a quart, four cups of, of finished polenta. And look here, this, you can see this rice is already broken down. And that's just gonna start soaking up that uh, chicken stock. And now, gosh, all of our pot holders got dirty. So I'm gonna pull out this, these are beef short ribs we did the other day. And this is what we're gonna have with our polenta tonight. So you can see how beautiful those are. Let me get a, So it's just fall apart. You can see it's really fatty. Nobody's curve is gonna be flattened eating like this, but you know, we just gotta have some fun. All right, so that's a great gravy that'll mix in great with this. And we'll put some chives and parsley on top. Um, and it's a great meal. All right, so we're about to plate our dinner. I didn't show you how to do the short ribs. Maybe we'll do that some other time. Um, chives are my very favorite, very, 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 very favorite fresh herb to finish a dish with. Um, citrus lemon is my favorite way to finish, my other favorite way to finish a dish. But this is fr fresh chives. And so now we'll come over here and here's our polenta, but take a look here at this. See how thick this is getting? It's already almost soaked up all that liquid and I'll add another two or three cups and it'll be up to here. And that's just a great, it's just a great thing. Put some fish sauce, some sriracha, some lime juice. Um, peanuts is a great thing to put on your kanji, but we'll keep, all right, so we're gonna, made a mess yet. Okay. I do hope everybody, when this is over, will be so happy to get back to life, get back to living and hugging and get back to the theater. So there is the beef. I want to give that another. And that's a great, see, that's rich gravy. It almost looks like, uh, and then we're going to come over here. I wish you could taste it. The chive station. The chive station. The finishing station. All right, there you go. Okay, so we made the kanji. It's the rice porridge. It's an Asian dish that's people wake up and eat, have it for breakfast. Um, we discovered it at the Canton House in um, on Buford Highway, but you can get it at Vietnamese restaurants as well. And this is just rice with chicken stock. Uh, and leftover rice topped with a little fresh ginger, scallions, we're having this for lunch, um, some chopped peanuts, cilantro, definitely a squeeze of lime. This is, you won't eat anything better than this. Um, little sriracha, and if you're feeling really super slutty, this is not a great ingredient, but it's a tasty ingredient. Little fried onions. And that is kanji. You won't eat a better thing. 
Look at that. Oh, bon appetit. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something you didn't know. It's something that'll make you want to get into the kitchen and play with chicken thighs. Um, next time we get together, we're gonna make those recipes that I just talked about. We're also gonna make the chicken and dumplings with the soup. Um, and also we'll be going to the garden very shortly because we're about to put all of our tomato plants in, our pepper plants, our eggplants. Um, and I wanna take you there to show you that part of our lives that's keeping us sane. Thanks, cheers. For more information and to download all the recipes that you've seen on this episode of Cooking a la Lala, please visit horizontheater.com. Thank you so much for watching the rebroadcast of Cooking a la Lala. As you know, we have been canning our garden tomatoes and I would love to share them with you. All you need to do is consider making a donation to Horizon Theater and your name will be entered into a raffle to win two quarts of these garden tomatoes. All you need to do is go to horizontheater.com to donate or go to feedback at Horizon Theater and somebody from the theater will contact you. And the sooner you donate, the more chances you have to win because if your name is not drawn the first week, your name will stay in the bucket and you'll have another opportunity to win. So give early if you choose to and you will have the chance to have these delivered to your front door by me unless you live in Chattanooga or Vladivostok. But I would love to share this with you and if you're interested in learning how to can tomatoes, watch episode 12 of Cooking a la Lala and We'll show you how. Again, thanks for so much for supporting the show, and cheers.